Hello there, I want to do a simple little second channel video here where we're going to fix the Micronova because uh, it has yet another new problem. But I also want to talk about something uh, that helped me find the problem in a weird indirect way that I think is worth uh, just mentioning so that people know about it. So I had the Micronova up and running and uh, was about to do some work with it and heard a weird sound. And what had happened is one of the two AC fans in there had a bearing go completely rogue. Yeah, you can probably hear that on the mic. Uh, that, didn't, that didn't go well. So I actually heard the bearing fail and was able to rush over and turn the computer off uh, before it went too bad. But what was interesting is after I took off this metal sheet that covers it, so you know you don't get your fingers in there, uh, I was trying to figure out something and I put my hand on it and I felt it was ridiculously hot. So I went and rushed and grabbed the thermal camera and got this shot where this fan got up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is just a crazy number. Now keep in mind, this is a full metal frame on here, so uh, the heat conducts extremely well through that. So that fan was going to go absolutely uh, over the top crazy hot, uh, and I'm really glad that I caught it uh, and that I could hear it being caught. Now I'm calling that out because I was watching random YouTube stuff uh, while I was running the computer in the background because the fans in this thing are really loud, so I'm usually trying to drown it out with something else. But I have taken to always wearing phone conduction headphones when I am working on vintage computers now, and I think this is a really great example of why this is the only kind of work or uh, headphones that you should use when you're working on pretty much anything that's slightly dangerous. Um, so these are, well, I brought the box in here. Uh, these are these, they are open ear bone conduction headphones. And I use these a lot. There's not a whole lot to see in the box because, well, I'm holding them. Uh, and I really, really like these. I think they actually sound pretty good. I mean, obviously they're, you know, kind of garbage headphones, but they don't sound bad enough to be distracting. And if you have ever tried bone conduction headphones and thought they sounded awful, I think I know why. Because you probably got scammed like I did here. I tried to order a second set of these and was sent these instead. And these, while they claim to be, well, they say not in-ear wireless headphones, uh, they they really want you to think they're bone conduction. They aren't. Uh, they. They really try to be bone conduction headphones uh, in you know design, but when you actually go to try and use them, they're very clearly just regular earbud speakers inside of a plastic frame that doesn't go in your ear and then sounds awful. So if you've ever bought cheap bone conduction headphones and got something like this, you haven't tried bone conduction headphones and your test is uh, invalid as those are to be bone conduction headphones. So I highly, highly recommend getting uh, real bone conduction headphones and uh, using those when you're working on weird stuff where you might need to be able to hear something because this definitely allowed me to hear that fail in real time and I'm really glad. So yeah, if you ever see me wearing these in a video, that's why, because uh, these allow me to hear everything else in the background while I'm able to listen to other things and it's just absolutely fantastic. All right, now on to the actual repair. Like I mentioned, these are AC fans. So it's uh, 120 volts, I don't, they say 115, whatever, it doesn't matter. 120 volt AC in. They have these two metal uh, contacts here that these uh, clips go onto. I forget the name of that, the whatever standard crimp terminal, spade connector crimp things. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, uh, so this is a Torin TA450. Uh, it looks like Nidec may still make fans like this, but I couldn't find any from like a reputable distributor for some reason. Uh, so I ended up ordering these uh, weird fans from Amazon. So this is the same thing, basically AC to, you know, it's, a, it's the same current rating if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, just slightly different. Uh, this is also a metal frame. 
So that's encouraging here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, this should be a drop in replacement. So here's hoping I can go ahead and do that. Now, if one fan failed, then they're probably both going to fail at some point. So I did order two of these because I don't want to have to do this again later. So we're going to go ahead and swap both of these fans at once here. Uh, they mount kind of weird. There are studs in the uh, frame and then there are nuts that go over that. There is no real great way to get something in there. I mean, I guess an open-ended box wrench would work, but I don't know. I'm just going to use pliers and do this in a really lame way. Oh yeah, I should probably disconnect it first. Hold on. Camera, record that it's red to the outside. Now, I'll say as I'm pulling this fan off of here, uh, there's a reason that I didn't go with something like a Noctua replacement on these. That's because these are going to be extremely high pressure fans. Uh, they have to blow air through this, which is not just a grill. This is actually the card cage uh, for the back plane. So it has to push air over all of the cards. Then it travels through the machine and exits through the power supply on the other side. So it's really important that it has enough force to be able to push air all the way through the whole thing. So I wouldn't put a uh, lower PSI or static pressure fan in place of this thing. Wow, those connectors uh, or spade terminals are way looser than the other ones. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely replacing these like for like in this case. Kind of funny these fans are threaded <laughs> are the original ones the original ones are not but instead of just bolting them directly on using these studs <laughs> all right yeah that one oh those are totally gonna buzz that's gonna be awful well let's find out that is both of them replaced. I'm curious if they're going to be quieter just because they have, you know, 50 less years on them. All right. Let's see how this goes. That's noticeably less quiet. A lot less wow uh, on startup too. How are we doing for airflow? Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. Cool. No buzz either. They're actually so much quieter, I can now hear like a small high pitch whine. <laughs> All right, cool. Oh, those originals must have been threaded or maybe hopefully they were. Uh, this might... This might be a slight problem here. I'm going to push the grills out a little bit just to make sure that they're not going to hit the hubs. Oh, that's what it is. There's metal clips here uh, that are threaded. Okay. Well, that doesn't work. Uh, well, let's see how this goes. <laughs> so these are threaded metal clips that go around the fan, but because these aren't as thick as these, uh, they aren't going to clip on, but I might be able to just kind of hold them in place. <laughs> we'll see. They're not an amazing mount solution. I might be able to get a better fitting screw here. Actually, they may have come with them. Now they came with super long bolts. Do these even match the thread? No. <laughs> okay. Why then? I'm going to guess they're modern and from China. They might be a metric bolt. Yep. So that is TV sized metric mounting bolt. I don't remember what that is. Is that M8 
It's an M5 for vase monitors and M8 for televisions. Well, either way, I don't think I have short M8 screws, so still not going to be able to do that. So we'll try to do this the original way. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. And I'll have to do it by hand over here. If I had M8 screws, I would use them. I don't. Oh, I'm golden. Okay. So I'm taking this clip, I'm dropping it over the threaded insert for the fan, pushing the bolt through. I'm going to guess based on the number there, it's a 630 seconds bolt uh, is what it comes with. And then I just tighten it. It's threaded into the back. So yeah, that works. Just want to make sure it's not hitting the fan. And that's about it. All right, turn it on one more time. Make sure the fans aren't hitting. Nope, it's perfect. Beautiful. Now, this is the uh, service log that came with my uh, Micronova here, and I've actually recreated the system incident log here. I think I show this in the next main channel video here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and block out some of the things that are coming up there because, uh, yeah, uh, there's some spoilers there, um, unless you're watching the live streams. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and mark down uh, the fan replacement here. So this actually revealed itself on the 26th as the issue. Uh, I don't remember what time it was. I think it was around noon, let's say. Uh, let's see. Operator was me. Call number four, actually. So, let's say computer fan bearing fail R oh it's been a while since I've drawn an ampersand yeah R and R both fans oh, my first single line <laughs> close three 29, 25, and what is it? 846. Boom. Trying to keep the history of the computer going. All right. That was another successful repair on this thing. Now I can go back to whatever it was I was working on. Uh, I'm sure I'll figure it out. I keep getting pulled away by weird little one-off problems. Man. It's almost like 50 year old computers weren't meant to be around for 50 years. Well, that's it for now. Keep real bone conduction headphones in mind when working on things like this so that you can, you know, hear when something happens. Uh, but yeah, I would link these down below, but uh, I have a hard time finding them myself. I actually have a new pair that's going to be delivered maybe today or tomorrow, and I'm just hoping that they're actually the same ones and I'm not getting scammed again. But that's it for now, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.